the circus owner coming up and he was uh telling us how we we now kind of work for him and how i don't think any of us were having that i remember wilbur going through the portal after using a, a gem or something and i wanted to check out the box that was in the upper right hand corner of that back room uh that's what i remember how about you Chaz? what do you remember um, pretty much everything until we get into the back room. Um, there were rods that looked kind of like uh, umbrellas mm-hmm. in a stand in the northwest corner. Um, those rods are what was used to operate the portals. They are associated with the portal based on the frame and the rod type. So wood for wood, green for green, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Wilbur was able to, I think, identify one of them. And then he used it and went through one of the portals um, to the outside of the tent somewhere. And then as soon as he did that, the portal seemed to go inert again. So he couldn't follow him. Hmm. Uh, And he took the rod with him. Oh, so he took the rod with him. Great. I believe he did, yeah. Okay. So we still have some other uh, Kane's rods that we could use. Mm Mm-hmm. We still have a ton of those gems, and some of us took some. Uh, I took pearls. Um, and I can't remember if Skugmo, I think he was looking at the chest in the northeast corner, but I don't know if he'd actually made any attempts to get it open yet. Um, I don't think he did open it. I think he was a little bit cautious. I don't remember. Skugmo, Unless... do you? I believe that. That what? I, I believe at the end we were trying to take a I was taking a look at it, but I hadn't gotten to the point where we we're gonna open it. We kinda wrapped up the session right. at that point. Okay. That's cool. And so that's kind of where we ended up things is thinking, well, how do we get out of here? And then um that's when some others kind of started talking uh between ourselves of what we know about who this guy might be. Okay. And then it's where we Go ahead. Okay, Ren. Okay, uh, just to fill in some things, um, back with Drillbus, um, you know, I think one of the characters, I don't know if it was Wilbur or Chaz, uh, noticed that uh, the rune on his staff or something was an uh, ancient Netherese symbol that um, aligns with illusion. Mm-hmm. And. Um, also, uh, when he kind of faded away, um, uh, of his, his illusion faded away and he reached out, we noticed on the hand that he reached out, mm-hmm. it had a scar on it. And some people viewed him differently. I think uh, myself and I don't know if it was Amber Skugmo uh, saw him as a um, kind of a lonely, a lonely old man. I think he said something about uh, Cassandra said he, he thinks he needed to get a life or something, or maybe that was uh, Adra. Uh, but <laughs> a couple of them uh, saw him as a, a Netherese lord. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I think I think it was Chaz or somebody. Uh, we opened up the sarcophagus that has all these trinkets, and I think. Chaz or somebody took a handful of them. Um, the um, the stat the wands that you found in the um, uh, the umbrella holder uh, correspond, I think, to the the frames, whatever the frames of the uh, mirrors or portals are made. So the one you used was a was an ivory one, I believe. Mm. And I think you said hocus pocus or some or abracadabra or some magical thing like that. And yeah, it was really true. basic. I remember that. And uh, I'm trying to. Oh, and Drillba said, you know, nothing. Something when we were having the discussion said that nothing was amiss until we entered the uh, entered the tent. And um, so we're not really sure. We're just trying to find a way to get out of here. I think that's about it. 
Okay, Cass, what do you remember? Oh, I remember I was having a cup of tea in the nearby tavern until someone just gave me like a uh, note saying, come to the circus and such in a very nice elven language. And when I exited the tavern door, I suddenly, in the, I was suddenly transported to the center of the stage where everyone is. And they explained to me what happened and once I entered the circus, it seems that Drillbus's illusion may have flickered a bit, showing us his true form a bit there. But in this case, he went away to do something else, and I went to the flow and did a little chores around the circus. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, I went and assisted um, my companions around and opened the sarcophagi here, filled with elemental summoning stones, and then... Pretty much it, and I'm not going to say anything I have or the history that I have based on the Nether Realm, since most of the artifacts around here may be of Netherese origin. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit of lore that you have to share, since you got, since you're pretty much just arrived, and you kind of have an idea of that they're dealing with Netherese stuff. Maybe you want to share a little bit of lore that you had discovered uh, in our downtime. Gather around, children. Let Cassie here tell you the story and the rise and fall of Netherese. <laughs> no. I'm a bit, I'm still a bit timid though, so I'll be summarizing it up. Due to the, due to the hubris and arrogance of. Let me just make sure here that everything's all clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is Crassus, the emperor of the Netherese. He um, wanted to be the avatar of magic. He tore apart, he tore asunder the weave, making all of the magic come inert for a while, killing also the goddess of magic for a while before she, grew, she was able to repair it, the weave. But due to this, the empire and all its cities fell to the ground. Only a few Netherese still survive to this day as nomads and barbarians. The only real threat that I can confirm if our enemy is truly Netherese are the Shadow Bars. And all of these illusions may be powered by a Mycelar, or a uh, more compact or more limited source that is a Mycelar. A mycel. In this case, if you see any like magic glowing stuff, don't just immediately touch it, or your life and soul will be disintegrated and added to its power source. So, for now, let's just investigate further on the circus and see if we can find Wilbur. Everything sounds to be potentially on par, at least uh, most of the large history. Mistral was destroyed before Mistra could come in and return. Um, although maybe Mistral was destroyed before the Sundering. Um, I don't know about don't touch anything or your soul be forfeit. That seems perhaps a little far-fetched, but... Mm -hmm. uh, all of that. Um, I was one of the ones who saw Drillbus looking like a Netherese Archmagus type person there. Um, I did go through the gate. I don't remember having the rod with me. I thought that I had dropped that on at that. And then uh, was what you messaged me earlier something that I would remember from last session? Or is that... Okay, cool. Um, as far as everything else, uh, the room... 
Where's what? Oh, am I on what you call it? No wonder you. Sorry, I'm on all the time talk. I'm looking for the alias. Good, good best. Flame Blade troll. troll. She might be away from the uh, distance from the mic. True. Nope. Am I okay now? That's as good as I have the thing is turned up all the way. Well, it'll have to do. I hear her okay. I guess I get a, you know, I brought three headsets with me. This is the same one as my previous one, so I thought I'd try this first. And um, yeah, it doesn't work that great. But I don't, I don't remember the other two working at all. I think one was made to use with a Xbox or something. I brought the wrong stupid one. And the other one has the, um, you know, the jack kind, not the USB, but yeah. the jack one, and it doesn't work. Wow. Okay. You're you're clear though. Your your voice is clear. Yeah, it just seems like the gain is really low or something on it. Well, I just increased the volume to 200% for Amber. <laughs> oh, I just turned it up. I How's that? I could turn it up higher, 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 higher. How's yeah, that? it's a teeny bit better, but not much, but it'll have to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, adding into all of the other reveries that happened from last session, um outside of the tent before we first entered the sign that was there was originally written in goblin it says the greatest show on earth come on in and then it uh shift started to shift through languages uh as part of like some weird magic uh the symbols that were on the ground i believe also started turning into moons so those started shifting as well um if that's super important and then everything else is exactly as it as they said i didn't have anything different mm -mm. well those were old old ancient nethery symbols and you say they are reforming as moons they were yes crescent moons uh i don't think the type was ever specified but probably yes I thought we each saw the sign in a different way. Yeah, different that's language. Right. Yeah, yeah, I I saw it as moon since I don't read any languages. Hmm. Let's let uh, Amber tell us what she remembers. Ha! Huh, not a lot. Uh, yeah, I remember we're stuck in this tent, and uh, yeah, there was some crazy show, and the guy was uh, calling some, or he had called some thing from another plane and it was stuck on the stage and it was trying to get out and and we were worried it was going to attack us and we were stuck in there we could not leave and then i can't remember how we dispatched this guy but we got rid of the whatever it was that was on the stage and then we went in the back room and i think now we're stuck in the back room and i remember that robar uh used the um you know, the stick thing or whatever, an umbrella or whatever it is, and said the magic words, which I can't remember. I think it might have been Hocus Pocus or something like that. And then he went through the mirror, and we can't, no, none of us can get through. It's like he's gone from us, and we don't know where he went. That's all I remember.
Sure. Mm Well, then we should probably take time to figure that out. Okay. I do have a question for the peacock. <laughs> okay. So whenever we get started, just that's going to be my focus. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else have anything to say before we get going? No, I already know what Chaz would want, so I'll Good. DM you. Okay. And hmm. Wilbar knows what he wants as well. It's straight up. Okay. Was decided in beginning of session one. Great. So when you guys have that information, you let me know, and then we're gonna play it out. And if it can't be played out, we'll figure out a way to incorporate it at some point in the game. But until I have those plot points from you guys on how you want the circus to serve you or to help you or to even surprise you, um, that that's where we're gonna be. Is we're gonna be playing around in the circus. Okay, so um, last thing we remember is that Skugma was trying to examine a chest in the northwest, or excuse me, the northeast corner of the room. Um, Lady Shell, Amber, and um, Daedra, and I believe Ren were kind of on the outskirts, kind of looking in, kind of seeing what's going on. Um, Wilbur has just disappeared through the doorway. Uh, Skugmo, you turned around and all of a sudden he's gone. Um, Chaz has confirmed that he took the wand with him. So it is not in the possession of anyone in the room. And the mirror has basically gone inert. So in other words, he stepped through and all of a sudden the magic is no longer active. Um, so Ch uh, Wilbur, can you please describe to the party... Uh, kind of based off what I've told you earlier out of game, like what is it that you see or where are you in respects to how your character sees it? Sure. Uh, after being teleported out of the room, um, very not exactly what I wanted, uh, I found myself on the opposite side of a portal that looked to be made of alien metals and weird technology that seemed to be powered by some sort of glowing blue ball. Uh, ahead of me, about 10 feet, uh, there is a locked door, and I can feel a presence on the other side of it that I recognize to be Rufus, who is my uh, mechanical dog boy. Um, there are lots of strange black urns that line the wall to the south. They're old, made of ebony, some charred, and some are even made of onyx or adamantine bones uh, held in large black containers. Inside, uh, there are bones that look to be of distended skeletons. 
Hmm. And the last thing that I wanted to do was I am currently sitting in front of the door. I am turning my Tinker's tools and making a set of Thieves tools so that I can attempt to unlock it and okay. get Rufus out of here. Okay. So I will let you use those, but you will be at disadvantage. Uh, even though I'm proficient with them? Because mm -hmm. you're picking a lock, right? Yes. Okay. Now you're not you're not getting disadvantage because you're you're using your tools. You're getting disadvantage because there's really no point in having thieves tools if you know unless you have thieves tools. Is that what you've made? Yeah. I, oh, okay. I've created thieves tools got using it. the uh, right. Oh, tools got it. Job yep. Yep. Of the arc. I forgot about that. I'm not that familiar with the uh, with the arc with that archetype yet. Okay. Cool. So go ahead and roll with just regular roll. Okay, so you try to manipulate the door in such a way that uh, you're feeling for the mechanical clicks and clinks. Um, you just pretty much meet air. Uh, you you put your your picks and tools and and keys and skeleton keys and such into the uh, into the doorway but it doesn't really feel like it's catching anything. It actually feels rather hollow, and it's kind of disturbing. You're like, what? It's almost like uh, just a hole in the wall. So you suspect that it's not mechanical. All right. Um... Hmm. Well, we're just going to sit back down on the floor and think about this for a little bit. And look around and examine the items around the room. Okay. Um, as you're looking around, you notice that a couple of the containers that was holding the, the ebony bones are recently moved, I guess you could say. Uh, meaning that there's a thin layer of dust and some cobwebs strung between them. But a couple of them have been uh, recently disturbed. Um, to the north of where you're sitting, or where you're contemplating your next move, there are basically some empty urns and some uh, kind of like mortar and pestle type things. So you're kind of thinking that you're in the midst of somebody's laboratory. Um, you feel that this is not the main room, although it is the most traversed recently. Um, really no other way in or out that you can see other than the portal or the doorway and the doorway has defeated your sense of mechanical uh, aptitude okay um i will go and specifically examine the glowing blue ball okay walk over towards this glowing blue ball and there is a slight hum to it um i want you to roll an arcana check please in the dice tower um you recognize this as being a very very complex highly magical object uh something that you would like to examine someday in the future but at this particular moment it seems to be one of the mechanisms that's powering the portal. Uh, it has a slight hum to it. It has a light blue glow. It's actually casting a little bit of light into the small chamber that you're in. Um, it also appears that it's kind of uh, mounted into the, or inlaid into the, uh, the shelf that it's sitting on. And it has like a, I don't know how to, just, almost like tendrils of magic. Uh, kind of intertwined with it. It seems to be almost living, and whatever it is, it's super, super highly powerful. I mean, it's it's something that you've never discovered before. So with your insight and your um, arcana, you realize that this must be some sort of ancient, either netheral or otherworldly magic that you have never seen before. Even the architecture of the portal on this side is very different than it was on the other.
All right. And you can hear some whimpering beyond the doorway. All right. Um, he's going to mutter to himself a little bit and uh, frantically start searching around the room, looking at the just moved urns and seeing if moving any of those will pop the lock on the door. Okay. So go ahead and roll an investigation. So you very fervently start checking through all these things. Um, in the north, where the the laboratory equipment is, uh, you notice a lot of dry substances. Some of it looks like it may have been water or something that had a little bit of scale to it. The other looks like dried blood. Uh, there are also urns of unknown substances, perhaps chemicals at one time. Uh, something obviously alchemical. Um, to the south, the urns that you are going to examine, um, as you reach your hand down, you notice a symbol on one of the um, urns that makes you retract your hand. So rather than touching it, you kind of stop yourself in your curiosity and your frantic methods. And you go, eh, I don't know if I want to mess with these. And the symbol that you see on there is an ancient netheral symbol, which is basically like a warning. And the warning is basically, don't touch. That's the gist that you get from it. By the way, you have rolled very well on both checks. Okay, so... Can't pick the lock... Don't touch the urns. Blue ball bat. Um, <laughs> click, click, click. Yeah. Um, well, I guess I'm kind of stuck in this room for a few minutes more at the very least um i'll continue searching around and trying to find if there's anything and out of character is going to be me thinking because my brain just isn't that's fine um right now. as you're kind of roaming around the room you notice the closer you get to the um the doorway or the portal that you came through um begins to kind of open or activate uh, the further away, uh, the portal stays closed. So I'm going to move on. So while you're thinking about that, I'm going to move on to, uh, let's go with uh, Amber. So Amber, you just walked into this chamber um, where all this the sarcophagi was, and I think you had made some um, observations about it earlier uh, in the last session. So uh, Wilbur is nowhere to be found. Chaz is standing there kind of going, okay. Uh, looks like he went through the portal. You see Skugmo up there, or Mo, standing on the chest, kind of examining it, maybe even trying to open it. Uh, Cassandra had just come in and blurted out her lore that she had about the netheries. So Cassandra, can you repeat that for uh, Lady Shell? I don't think she heard that. All right, and this time I'll be more confident and much more clear. <laughs> okay. Um, in this case, the Netherese were an ancient human race from long before the time. <laughs> they learned magic from elves, and due to their hubris and arrogance, they tried to control, in any case, magic themselves, or at least recreate it. And it is Kratos' folly that made the Empire uh, or that caused the empire's fall. Cities fell from the sky and their goddess died for and also reformed just to save some of them from falling falling to the, uh, to the ground far too fast. But in this case, based on our circumstances, the one we are facing today, Drillbus, is either one of the netherreal lords or magic lords here. So what I need to warn you all is 
this whole place may be powered by a mithril, which is in this case a very powerful Netherese artifact that is powered by, let's say, a life essence. Touching this mithril may cause your life and your soul to be disintegrated and absorbed to this very powerful artifact. So, anyone here around this room, I advise you caution and what you touch, especially you, Skagmo. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, Lady Shell, what do you think about that? What does Amber think? I see her hot, but there's no sound. Yeah, yeah, something happened. Yeah, because I have her at 150%. I have her at 200. I can't hear her. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, try to switch it again because we could. Be, I can just barely, barely hear you. Oh. So now it's lower. It's even lower. Oh, I'll uh, I'll try and work with her on her. Um... Okay. So Amber's kind of uh, trying to get her bearings. Um, so I will go to Mo. So Mo, you now you're the center of attention. Um, Cassandra has pointed that out so pointedly. So what <laughs> are you doing? <laughs> uh, I want to look at this uh, green box. I believe it was green. Mm -hmm. uh, All, right. All right. Okay. It gives you the impression that it was important at one time, and your curious nature and also your um, confidence, and now that you have all these new friends, has kind of inspired you to potentially try to open it. Um, but Cassandra kind of shot you a warning, and usually when she says that, she means business. You've known her long, long enough to uh, respect her uh, advice. Okay. In that case, I will approach her, and she'll notice I'm holding an old sock in my hand. And <laughs> I say, oh, maybe there's something good in this. And uh, the sock has various bits of things I found underneath the bleachers, and we can kind of take a look at that. Okay. So go ahead and move your character. Okay. Okay. So I move, and I will show her the contents of the sock, whatever that is. So what is in the sock, based off exactly. what you remember? I just remember picking up, uh, you know, anything shiny, anything interesting. But I don't know if we ever said anything in particular was in there. Okay. Like, I know there maybe some coins or something. So in the sock are some, in fact, some copper, a couple silver, maybe a gold, and a feather. Oh, yeah. I, I, I do recall a feather now. I'll take a look at that. And some old food, dried popcorn, things like that. Ooh, dried popcorn. My favorite. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> um, me too. And a rat's tail. Uh... The tail of a dead rat that was severed by... I don't know. It got in between something. I have no idea. <laughs> Lots of ABC gum, <laughs> according to Ren. <laughs> well, let's look at the feather. What do you make of this feather, Cassandra? Hmm. Let me see. Where did you get this feather? Well, everything under bleachers. I see. Hey, Lyrin, can I roll an arcana check or something? <laughs> sure. And this time, I'm just going to roll it in the dice tower. I am mm -hmm. still skeptical of my luck.
Okay. So you're kind of looking and examining. You don't see anything spectacular, although the feather is very curious. Mm, no, this feather is very curious. <laughs> Interesting. You know, one thing that stands out with your initial examinations is that these may have been spell components of some sort. Hmm. Oh, in this case, hey, Chaz, do you perhaps require any more components? This feather may be of service. Don't forget the rat's tail. Mm -hmm. Hey, Chaz, buddy old pal, everything all right? <laughs> Everything is fine. Still just trying to puzzle out how we might be able to leave this place. I don't have any more uh, any spells to identify anything. And I feel that grabbing a rod and just futzing with it would be, uh, well, unproductive. Mm -hmm. And quite dangerous, too. How <laughs> about let's not rush into misunderstandings here and let's hear out all Jilbus here or Sir Jilbus and um, let's hear more of her offer and maybe we can even have a counter offer of setting us free <laughs> I really think that uh, Amber's character is probably standing there with her arms folded with a very big frown and she's probably very very disappointed that uh that Wilbur had already disappeared, and she really hasn't had the chance to take stock of what's happening in this particular room, although she does understand that there are, is magic afoot. And where there's a magic afoot, she can pretty much assume there's problems or trouble. Trouble in River City. <laughs> trouble in River City, she said. Um touch just barely i don't know what to do uh, did i mention i dropped the computer the other day on the floor outside the car i mean it, it seemed to be working before but um now i'm getting like crackling no this isn't crackling yeah so i don't know if it's the, the headphones or the computer But you said you can hear me, right? So um. it, right. Yeah, whatever you did at the very beginning, that was the best. I went back to it, and it apparently is not working. I tested the thing in the Discord, and it it said that I was getting sound was coming through the microphone. So I don't know. These microphones are not giving me the crackling sound that the other ones were, though. So I, I, I don't know. No, I dropped it while I was taking it out of the car. Because I keep going back and forth. No, 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 nothing. Oh, uh, the only thing plugged in would be the uh, USB that goes to the microphone. Oh, not microphone. To the, um, to the mouse and the um, keyboard. Because that sticks in the USB. But I mean, you heard me. You, we talked earlier, and it was fine. So I don't know why it just started acting up. I ordered another headset, though, so hopefully that'll fix it. If not, then it's the computer. Oh, please, when, no. When, when you're done, just follow my instructions and check something. Okay. All right. So, Amber, what do you think about um, all this stuff that's going on? What I said before was that Amber is looking around and she's tired of being stuck in this room and she wants, she would love to have a, an ale or a beer or something. <laughs> and she wished she, she had her brew already brewed with her, but she didn't have the um, stuff to make stuff. And yeah, she could really use some ale right now. She's really tired of this. Oh, more like ale too. <laughs>
Okie dokie. She's been at 200 for... That, that's really sad. That's sad that you have to turn me up that loud because I'm a loud person. It shouldn't have to be turned up that loud. Hello. How's it going? Okay, let me try putting the microphone by my closer to my mouth. Is that any better? That's better. better yeah. Mm -hmm. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me well? <laughs> Testing, testing. Test, test. How do you hear me? Hello, Wilbur. He's typing something in Discord. He's having a disc. Oh no. The virus is spreading. It's catching. Well, Amber, um, what do you sound like now? What do I sound like now? Oh, I sound terrible. Really? I sound kind of muffly in my ear. You're better. Oh, well, good. Then I sound just fine. All right. So the show must go on. So let's see. So Deidre, what do you think? You see that uh, um, that uh, Lady Shell's character Amber is kind of dismayed, kind of frustrated. I don't think you feel too great about what's happening, but you tell us how you feel about what's the the uh, going through your mind, Deidre. Oh, Deidre is of the same mind. She's not having any of this. She's feeling impatient, aggravated, separated from the one that she was hired to protect. And I believe she's standing in front of a caged peacock. She, okay. Uh, so that's upsetting to her as mm -hmm. well. And she wants to investigate that a little bit more. Okay. Um, as you... I'll give some insight as okay. to who that guy is and what this place is and how she could find her way to Wilbar. Okay. Um, can you roll a animal handling check, please? In the dice tower? Animal handling or nature? Either one. Hmm. Okay. So you're looking at this peacock examining it and... It looks like it's being fairly well taken care of, although you know in your heart that this is not right. This this thing just should not be in here. Um, it's not allowed to really protect itself, and one of the things that peacocks normally do, especially the males, is they'll display their feathers. And what you've noticed is that most of these feathers are gone. The, the large plumage that they usually put up when they're defensive. So he's kind of, I want to say, from what you can tell, I mean, he kind of is disheartened, I guess. Defeated is the word. Um, you can sense that from the, from the way he's behaving. Normally, he'd be cawing and making all these sounds, but uh, he's just kind of sticking to himself and kind of hiding in the back of the cage. So, you I mean, he's being fed and everything, but he's not happy. And he's lost most of his plumage. It looks like some of them are growing back, but most of the feathers are gone. The large ones. Okay, I would like to 
speak with him. Okay. On a level that he could understand. Mm hmm So I will do a divination to mm -hmm. be able to speak with him for 10 minutes. Okay. And what the rest of the party will see is that she will, like, get more onto the peacock's level, bob her head, squawk at it a few times. <laughs> and the <laughs> the um, interpretation of that is, oh, you poor thing, you are caged. Let me help you, but can you tell us anything about where you are and who that man is? <laughs> so I get to see you swinging your head. You know, that's right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's yapping with this uh, bird, and it goes, Eah! it makes that sound that they make, and it just startles the rest of you. This thing just lets out this caw. Uh, from what you can tell, Daedra, that it's telling you danger, and it's giving you the impression that something to do with the doorway that Wilbur had gone through, and that there's danger about, and that it is very unhappy and sad, and that it feels betrayed. That's what you get from this thing. Was it that man that betrayed you? It disagrees. It says yes. It disagrees. It says yes. It agrees. It just agrees and okay. says yes. Oh, okay. It doesn't elaborate. It just says yes. Would you like me to open your cage? It doesn't answer. It kind of just kind of slinks back into the cage as if afraid. Okay, so not here. Hmm. Does it have any feathers on the bottom of the cage? You said he's lost a lot. or any of them outside of the cage? Or uh, You don't see really any evidence, although there is one that's broken. Um, one of the nice, beautiful plumage feathers. But all the rest of them are gone. It still has its smaller feathers. Its body's not, not nude or anything. It looks like it's growing a couple of them back. They're just like stubby little quills now. But it's going to take a long time for this peacock to go back to his regular plumage. I mean, normally they only lose a couple of them at a time. So this is really a big blow to this, this animal. This is like cutting the fins off a fish or something. It it just it's horrible. But it doesn't look like they've been cut. It looks like he's done damage by being in a cramped cage and getting. But somebody's cramped. collected them though. Oh, really? They're not there in the cage, so uh -huh. unless he ate them. Okay. Can I retrieve the broken one? Sure. If you reach your hand in there. And uh, you fish it out, and the bird kind of just looks at you, kind of like, okay. It's kind of, it's got its head turned sideways, because you know how their eyeballs are kind of more on the side of their heads. And it's kind of watching you now, like, okay, what is she doing now? No, oh, no worries, uh, Mr. Peacock. I'm just taking this in case it might be useful. So you're feeling high stress, high anxiety when you grab the feather. Do you want your feather? It just doesn't respond. It just is freaked out. Mo will wander over and hand Deidre the, the feather that he had. And he's oh, maybe this <laughs> helped, friend? Okay, what kind of feather do you have there, Mo? Oh, I don't know. Feather. What does Mo's feather look like? Does it look like a peacock feather? No, it looks more like something from a parrot or a more of a smaller bird. Um, it's a little bit more fuzzy, almost like down feathers. Um, it's obviously from a different breed of bird. However, it is brilliantly green. Can I roll a nature check? Sure.
It is indeed the plumage of a tropical bird of some sort. Um, you haven't really visited the tropics or anywhere that's warm enough to support this colorful uh, thing of this this feather, but you have, you know, you know enough to know that this is a bird, and it, this is probably an under feather of some magnificent, beautiful bird. Um, but you're not sure exactly which breed or anything. But the feather looks like it's been around. It's kind of dusty and there's some cobwebs on it, um, some dust and whatnot. Okay, well, I will turn back to the peacock, and I will leave the broken feather with him and see if that makes him look a little less anxious. As a matter of fact, it does. It does. It does. Okay. Yeah, it. you get the, you see him calming down a little bit. Like, you can almost feel his heart rate, like, accelerate when you reach in there and try to, when you grab the feather initially. And when you set it back, and when you're examining the green feather, he seemed to be a little bit more at ease, so maybe less threatened. I'm not sure how to convey it to you, but it's more like an animal sense, you know, like uh, danger, fear, you know, sadness kind of thing. It's, it's all in one. It's, it's really hard to describe to you. Breaking. Yeah, it's distinctive. It's really distinctive. It's what, you know, his instincts are kicked in. So that's what you're feeling is the instincts coming from him. Do I see any evidence of the cage of a, like a food bowl? Any? Yeah, there's an empty, there's an empty water thing there, and then there's a little bit of food at the bottom. They look like sunflower seeds or some kind of seed from a plant, and then um. Some of the water was spilled, so what it's done is there's a little patch of the bottom of the cage where it's kind of mildewy, and the seeds have actually sprouted because they were exposed to water and all the nitrogen from the from the bird's poop. So they're actually sprouting <laughs> some of the food. So they've obviously been there for a bit. Okay, well, I will refill the water. From okay. My own water skin. Okay. And clean out the bottom of the cage. So it seems to be very happy. Uh, as soon as you break out your water skin or whatever you're carrying your water in, it immediately starts drinking, and it seems to be a little bit less stressed out. Is about the best way I can put it. So it was probably dehydrated or a little bit on the um, neglected side. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I know one of my things. <laughs> <laughs> this is really upsetting to Deidre. She doesn't like to see animals caged in such a way, caged at all, but certainly not in uh, poor conditions like this. So now she's starting to get like her heart rate is getting up there, and she's aggravated. So she will turn to the rest of the group, and she'll say, uh, "All right." We we need a plan on how we're getting out of here, and when we do go, we're taking this thing with us. Once we figure this circus out, this this bird is not staying here. Mm -hmm. No disagreements here. Hmm. So, Ren, what is your uh, what is your uh, body language like right now? Right now, I'm just a little uncertain of what's going on. Okay, so you're confused. I'm trying to help uh, Lady Shell. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of wait to see if uh, maybe Wilbur will return. That's why I'm kind of hoping, murmuring, Wilbur, <laughs> under my under my breath hoping that it'll bring them back <laughs> so mo you were going to say something oh uh Kath, uh Deidre said good feather and i give Cass the green feather mm -hmm. and then i walk mm -hmm. back over i walk back over to Deidre, kind of squeezing between ren and and Amber, 
and I give her my pet mouth. <laughs> um, Cassandra, you notice at the bottom of the feather has a dark stain uh, where the quill is. Hmm, so it may have been used as a uh, writing instrument of some sort? Yeah, can you roll a that's investigation, I guess? Okay, so your investigatory examination confirms dried ink, probably from long ago. The um, the tip of it is worn as if somebody had discarded it. But the residue from the ink is interesting. There is some sparklies in it. Looks like glitter, kind of. All right, I placed that in the inventory, and hmm, I also um, handed over to Chaz and stated, Hey, Chaz, is there anything else you can... Um, figure out regarding this sweater, it seems to have some sort of, let's just say, alchemical components on its quill. Hmm. I suppose I can take a look at it and see. I don't know if it's arcana, ar if it's uh, arcane in nature. Did. Okay, so um, based off your observations, um, most inks have a pigment. This one happens to have a kind of a ground up dust that comes from some sort of like she said, alchemical properties. So it may be silver, it could be platinum, whatever it is, um, it would conduct energy. And where you can conduct energy, more than likely magic. So you're thinking that maybe that this pen had been used to scribe something magical at one point. Perhaps a scroll, maybe not. Or just runes in general. Around yes. The area. See, there you go. So I let her know. It says it's quite possible that this was used to write maybe some of the runes we've seen. I see. Then, since it is a magical item and property, I'll be handing it over to you for now. Hmm. So, Chaz has the feather now? Mm hmm. In this All case, right. I would like to do something here. <clears throat> Cassandra uh, clears her throat, paces around the room, and started to say, <clears throat> Oh, great Lord Drillbus, if you can hear us and see us right now, we would like to propose a negotiation. It is cruelly quite rude to let guests wander around your lovely circus now, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, let us perhaps meet somewhere more um, decent, and let's talk about stuff, you know? Maybe we can negotiate the terms of our services. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and move your token where you're going to move, if you're going to move at all. You can move through your allies. Just facing back, back and forth through the portals and such. Okay, so go ahead and move your token. All right. <laughs> okay, so you're kind of wandering around, and at the moment that uh, you know that you walk towards the portal area, you notice that the portal opens up momentarily, and you can clearly see Wilbur sitting in a chamber of some sort, um, looking around uh, some kind of objects. It's hard, kind of hard to see. Hey guys, I see Wilbur. 
Welcome, let's go! Alright, and I just cartoonishly jumped over to, to j try to jump towards the portal. <laughs> <laughs> try talking, Amber. Okay, can you hear me now? A little ah, better. Yeah, that's better. Mm -hmm. I rebooted the computer. Weird. I don't know why. Huh. I'm logging into the Fantasy Grounds again. Okay. No now problem. She's still off softer for me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I don't get it. Maybe it's just on her end as far as servers go. I don't know. I think I might have to go in ad administration mode or something because the sound got really weird. Okay, that could very well be. Better there. Yeah, a little yeah, bit, I'm didn't it? I'm not hearing you guys very good. It's kind of like you're in weird. the background or something. Weird. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, some of you. Okay, I can hear Cassandra. I can hear Leroon. I couldn't hear whoever said it sounds better now. You can't hear me very well? Oh, I hear you now. Yes. Okay. All right, That's everything's good. all set. That's strange. I'll just rejoin. Okay. <laughs> so they even did Cassandra just face planted her face on the portal mirror say, say. <laughs> Um I wanted to make sure that Shell's connected so before we uh before we move on. This is not working. Hang on. Okay. Um, may I know how to rotate your tokens? Mouse over it and uh, do your mouse wheel. Yep. And uh, but once tokens are locked, you won't be able to turn your facing. Thanks. So what do you have left? We have a, a red rod. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what was the other color? He took it's, the ivory one. Yeah, I think there was like a brown. Well, that's the red one, I guess. And then there's, I think there was a green or yellow. Yeah, it's like a yellow or orange kind of color. Okay, so that's the red one. Yep, the one in the very bottom left corner, southwest corner, is the yellowish one. Okay. The one behind you, I guess, is the green one? Yep. And then the other one, there. see, there isn't all, all of these don't have corresponding canes. Mm -hmm. Most of them do, but not all of them. Well, I'll pull the green one out. Okay. I'll say, uh, Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus. So you open up the portal that's behind you, and inside appears to be a small room. Um, although it is uh, a magical disturbance in the mirror surface. Um, you're able to partially see into this dark kind of closet-looking thing, full of supplies and such. So it's basically going into like a, a wardrobe type thing. There's some costumes hanging in there. Um, it kind of messes with your depth perception because according to your last 
sight of the circus from the outside, it doesn't make sense that this closet would be there. There'd be no room for it. Oh, extra, extra spatial dimensions. I like it. Yep. Hmm. And I'll take the red one, and I'll say hocus pocus on the red one, and see okay. what that one. Uh, that one does something similar, although the, the purpose and manner of it, how it opens, it looks a little different than the other one. Although when you look inside, you see a bench with a bunch of makeup, and you can see some peacock feathers laying on the table. And you see a little whittling knife and some uh, some mirrors, some regular mirrors, I guess. You can call them that. Hand ones. And then you see um, a pouch that has a bunch of uh, miscellaneous stuff flowing out of it, like, uh, you know, seeds and coins and all kinds of little knickknacks. And then the uh, rest of the small room is basically just like a little closet, basically, uh, with a stool. So whoever used this area looked like they were applying some form of makeup. Or perhaps scrying something you're not sure, or not scrying, but you know, scribing uh, something. Right. So I'll learn, look back at the rest of the group and say, well, <clears throat> interesting enough, it looks like he has the same command word for, uh, well, at least these two rods as well. And I point out the one to the north saying, hmm, looks like that may be what, uh, what room they were using to do some of the scribing. I see the same feathers. At least they look identical, right, to what Skug picked up, what Mo uh, picked up underneath the um, yes. stands. Yes, yes. And then um, and I point to the one to the west of me, and I said, that that one looks like just a typical, uh, well, storage closet of some kind. Did you find any bird seed? Um, yeah, in the northern room, there seems to be a bag with some... Uh, bird seed on the table. And then I'll grab the last one, the yellow one, and I'll say, uh, look down in the, uh, somebody see on this other side of the sarcophagus here, and I, you know, say, hocus pocus, and what do you see in that mirror down there? Deidre, are you looking? I am. Okay, as you peer into the mirror, you momentarily you saw yourself in which that kind of freaked you out because you haven't seen yourself in a mirror in a long time. But uh, you've looked into this mirror and it dissolves into a dark kind of uh, closet-like thing. There appears to be a small room back here in which there is just a couple of trunks that are open and there's a bunch of colorful costumes. And there also seems to be uh, remnants of some old bones in here. Um, they look humanoid from where you're standing. And not to mention, um, there are also some utensils, like someone had eaten here before. Uh, it looks like whoever had been here um, hadn't been here in a long time. When you say remnants of a skeleton, do you mean that in pieces a pattern that would be... Pieces. Okay. Yeah, hmm. not not chopped up pieces, but like not complete skeletons either. Okay, there's some bones and more storage with costumes. Looks like someone used to take meals here, but I can't make out much else. Hmm. Hey, Do we dear. know how we can all go through one of these portals together? And not be separated. Well, I would guess if I have the rod here open, um, somebody goes through besides me or whoever holds the rod. And um, I intend to, well, I, I wish to go through this north uh, portal here, the one with the bird seed and the feathers, and perhaps see if there's any scribing materials in there that may provide further clues. I would but, definitely uh, like to retrieve that bird seed for the poor peacock. 
Now, if you would like to go through first, I, I will stay here and hold the portal open. Perhaps uh, that's how it works. I will do that. Daedra moves over and attempts to go through the portal. So you feel a brief momentary flash of energy um, kind of engulf you. Just a real brief flash. And you end up in this small pocket area. of like a closet. And there's walls and such and a ceiling. Um, it looks very ancient and old. And as you look towards the pouch that has the seeds uh, falling out, you notice that the seeds are so dry and so old that they could not possibly be the same seeds that were fed to the bird. I think we're good. Try it, let Amber try it. Maybe. Helps if I click the right button. I hope I'm not blasting anybody's eardrums out because no, I turned it way up. Right. No. Okay, perfect. great. Yeah, right, you're good. Okay, I'm going to take those seeds because I'm going to want to investigate them. Okay. Um, there's a couple what kind of seeds they are. Okay. There's a couple coins laying on the table. What do they look like? Is there they any markings? Yes, they have some really strange writing on them. They are not any kind of currency that you've ever seen in your life. And they don't appear to be gold, but they are some kind of shiny metallic, maybe platinum or electrum. Uh, you're not sure, but they are really strange looking. Okay, I'll take those as well to show to the party. And other than that, there's a chair and there's some old makeup. It's so dry that if you were to try to use it, you'd have to add water or fat. So it's basically disintegrated to where... Um, time has basically taken its toll on the constitution of the makeup. And you know oil lasts a long, long time. So whatever oils are in there have even dried out. So it's basically like a crust. Usually makeup has a little bit more um, play in it. This does not. It's like a little brick. So I try to call out through, through the mirror to her and says, Is there a way out over there? Do I hear that? Yes. And is there a way out? You don't see anything really um, that stands out other than the way you came in. And from the way you're coming in, it doesn't look like you're looking back into the, uh, into the tent. It's kind of a dark room, but you can hear his voice coming through the, uh, the magic of the mirror. No, this seems to be just a, an enclosed space. There's makeup. It's very old. Very old seeds, which I'm taking, but um, I what about don't know what else What about the feathers and the pen knife for making quills? Do you see any writing materials? Yes, she does indeed. And they do match the feather that uh, Skugmo. Had. Is there any writing on any of the sheets here? Actually, it looks like somebody had knocked over the ink vial that is on the floor. It's shattered, and there is a bunch of stains on the paper. So whoever wrote there or whatever happened, the, uh, the ink was basically blotted out anything. It's long ago since dried. As a matter of fact, the paper nearly disintegrates um, as you touch it. And this room seems to be very bone dry and kind of uh, stuffy, like uh, smothery kind of feeling. Like it's an old closet that someone hasn't been in in many years. Kind of has a musty, kind of dusty smell. It's really nothing rotten or decayed because it's so old. There's really not even any bacteria left to, to give off a scent. So it is just a really dry husk of a room. Um, even the timbers inside of this room uh, creak with age. Okay, I will take the seeds and one of the quills. 
Okay. The uh, crumble of the paper with some of the ink on it to show them, and I will try to return back through the mirror. Okay. Um, you were able to um, enter, and as you um, go through the mirror, your vision changes to that of the tent. And it is kind of a strange feeling because you got this feeling like you are no longer there, but you are here. It's kind of like an out-of-body experience. Uh-oh. Hard to explain. <laughs> um, it's just a sensation that you haven't felt before. It's kind of disturbing to you. Yeah, you guys can see her. Um, they can see you. Okay, well, you see her looking really confused and distraught. You're right. I found this paper with some ink on it, but it's crumble. It crumbles, and she's another quill. But that was unnerving coming back through there. Am I really here? Am I solid? Can someone pinch me? <laughs> Anybody dare? Sure, I do. She asked. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you you were able to touch her uh, flesh, and it, nothing strange or amiss. Oh, thank you. I was worried there. Really unnerved by that. I mean, we're dealing with magic. You're right to be concerned. But, at least with these rods, knowing that as long as whoever holds the rod doesn't go through, we seem to have some method at least leaving this small tent area. Um, guys, mm-hmm. while Cassandra was still looking at the mirror with a glimpse of Wilbur at the other side, one of my other arms just tried to at least tap someone from behind me and say, um, hey, guys, Wilbur is on the other side of here. So Amber, as they're investigating the rest of the room, you heard Cassandra claim that she saw a glimpse of Wilbur on the other side of the mirror. It had initially, for a brief second, opened. The ivory mirror, correct? Yeah, the one that she's next to. Or... Yeah. The one Amber's next to. Yeah, that's what... He has the rod, mm-hmm. or the wand, that opens the portal. Mm-hmm. Um... Yes, tell, I, I will say, or Deidre ask Cassandra, can you call out to Wilbar and have him come closer with the rod? I do hope so. Does anyone know how to message him? Yes. Can you um, actually message him in the game? So if you right-click on his name, his portrait, send him a message through, uh, a, a, pri- a whisper through the... Uh, through your uh, interface. Fantasy Grounds, yeah. Yep, through Fantasy Grounds. So you can right-click on Wilbur's name and send him a message. And Wilbur, you can do the same. Right. And I don't know what you guys have said, which is fine, um, because I have that turned off. So can I hear anything through the portal? Yes, you hear a voice, a familiar voice, that of Cassandra. But it was momentarily um, there because you had walked closer earlier to the um, vicinity of the portal with the wand that you had. And then you walked away and the sound went away. And you kind of walked closer and it came back. Okay, uh, I will move back towards the portal then, having heard their messages. Okay, so go ahead and move your token. Closer. Oh, well, hello. Hello there. Yay. 
<laughs> well, I need to uh, get right back through that portal. Uh, there's a friend I have to save. Wilbur. Ah, Hello, I'm so <laughs> glad to see you. Uh, I'm glad to see you guys as well. Uh, that had some unintended effects. I didn't really... wasn't intending to go through the portal. I just ended up that way. Seems <laughs> the uh, all the rods are activated by the same command word. Or at least they all seem to activate in uh, a function in the same manner. Do you know of a second function of these rods, or is that the only one that we're aware of? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that was the only function of the rod, correct, when I cast the identify? Yeah, as far as you know, yeah, there wasn't any tertiary effects or nothing that you noticed. Although you notice as you got closer, it activated the portal. Uh, they also activate the portal on the other side. That's about it. And you also feel your connection to your um, thing go away. To your uh, pet. Hmm. Uh, where do these other portals go? Have you guys looked at that? Yes, in fact, you can see i think they're all still active point to the red one to the north that seems to go to a um, makeup area mm -hmm. brought back some seeds and a paper that's been spilled with some kind of uh, arcane uh, ink pot and some quills most likely from the peacock that uh, is outside the one uh, behind us seems to be more of a storage area and to the southwest seems to be maybe a uh, changing room eat with some old remnants of food this place is strange um hmm. well nothing ventured nothing gained <laughs> hmm. so um while you guys are um kibitzing about what's happening here. Um, Daedra herself has disappeared. Yeah, just Not like, again! Uh, did she go through the portal, or she just disappeared? You think she might have went through the portal? Is it still active? Oh, dear. So, Daedra, can you move your uh, token forward? Did she go through the the same one that? Mm -hmm. um... Yeah, basically. Okay. Uh, I can't find my token anymore. Um, what you want to do is double click on your on your character sheet. Double click on your token on the right side, not your portrait, but your token. And you might have to expand your map a little bit. Okay, I see it. Okay, if you can, please move your token forward. Okay. There you go. All right. Well, I don't know how you went that far, but that's okay. Whoa. And now she's back. So you just came back through again. I'm feeling really weird, guys. Uh, do I feel any different having come back from the opposite side of the portal? Um, yes, you feel a little bit um, lightheaded. You feel a little bit confused. And you feel as if you've had like a slight out-of-body experience. And you haven't traveled through any portals in maybe once in your lifetime. So this is a little bit disorienting, although you've had training in these possibilities, so it's not beyond your scope of understanding and reasoning. Although for the rest of these people, they may not take it so well, except for maybe Chaz, maybe Cassandra. I think Amber would understand, but she would probably frown on it. So uh, um, Amber, what do you think about the uh, 
this uh, doorway. Yeah, it's very foreign to me. Um, I am kind of scratching my head wondering what the heck is going on and people keep disappearing and reappearing and, and, and when am I going to have my A? <laughs> soon, dear. Soon. <laughs> Hopefully. I wonder if these, if we don't have, uh, was it a simacorum? Um, mm -hmm. of Wilbur and Daedra. Although Daedra, she felt that way. So this is the second time she felt that way where she transferred through. She feels like an out-of-body experience. So Wilbur, what did she see on the other side? Because it would have been the same thing. Yeah, while I was while I was over in the portal, like what did she see of me? Yes, or what did she see, period? Since I didn't uh, describe it to, to you guys very well. Yeah, so Vilbar was um, on the other side of the portal. Having stepped through the one that I went through, at least, if you did, um, you would have come into an alcove that serves as kind of a laboratory. Uh, the portal is very alien, made of metal, uh, and it and it's powered by a glowing blue ball that is sending off tendrils of magic if you are in the proximity of it. Uh, on the cross the alcove, ten feet away, there is a door that seems to be locked. Uh, there are strange black urns lining the south wall, uh, made of eb some of ebony, some of bone, some of onyx, and they're all held in uh, large black containers. And uh, looking through the portal, you would have seen, like, Wilbar frantically running around through each of these, trying to just see if there's anything that he can do to get out, and not even really looking at them. Are you all feeling okay? Um, not quite, but it's kind of... I guess you feel kind of stoned. I don't know how to describe it. Amber, no need for beer. Go through portal. <laughs> <laughs> so, not to break immersion, but I'm getting a pop-up message. Do I wish to return to Big Top? I'd probably hit yes. Okay. Go ahead and say yes. And now what's happening, um, I am showing Ren the seeds that I found. And also, as I'm, as I'm holding out my hand with the seeds, I'm kind of looking in his fur for any insects or anything that might be fed to the peacock. Because I don't think peacocks are purely seed eaters. I, th I think that they are you know, seed and insect eaters, and this thing needs some protein in it. Yeah, Ren's fine with uh, her uh, so scavenging any bugs out of his fur. Um, he'd like to closely examine the seeds, you know, smell them, look at them, see if he in any way recognizes them. And also he has his ability to um, detect magic. With okay. Television. So go ahead and uh, first do your... Um... Nature check, I guess. What you can tell of these seeds, they are long past their um, due date of productivity. Uh, they probably won't ever seed, which is rare because normally when you find seeds, regardless, they can usually come up with something. Um, go ahead and do your residue thing. The residual um, magic or wherever this came from, um, you get this kind of this purplish color. And the last time you saw that color is when you were with the trees. Hmm. 
you have not seen this color in many, many, many years. Or months, I should say. Okay. Well, I'm kind of glowing purplish now. Daedra, can Daedra see that Ren is glowing purple? Mm-hmm. He's, yeah, this hue is kind of growing slowly. You kind of have this evolving color from his brownish fur into this, like, purplish glow. And it's kind of startling, but at the same time, yeah, it's kind of cool looking, too. I, I look at Amber nervously and ask Amber, um, what's happening? Uh, he's turning purple. Do I know? Th I mean, I'm sure I've seen him do this. I'm thinking that it's something to do with his uh, his uh, barbarian, uh, what do you call it? Right, but you, in the past, you have seen him change color once, but it wasn't purple. Oh, hmm. But, but I know it's something to do with his... You're probably not sure. Something? You're oh, probably you're not sure. Hmm. Okay, I've I'll... never seen him turn this color before, but I have seen him turn... I don't even know what color he would uh, turn. Pink with the... Elite. Pink. Oh, that's right, pink. Yeah. What does this mean, Ren? <laughs> <laughs> so what did you say, actually, to him, or try to say? What does I this said, mean? What does this mean, yeah. So, Ren, you got the uh, impression that she's asking you a question. Mm -hmm. She's inquiring you. So, um, I will, you know, kind of grunt back to her and language that she can understand and I say essentially um, hmm, tree magic hmm I will uh, translate he said that it's tree magic so I, I didn't see what, what happened so what's tree magic he turned purple he yeah you can see the light purple Oh, he ate some of the seeds? No, he actually held them and um, started turning colors. Like hmm. one of those Christmas trees when you put the little uh, <laughs> white thing on it and it turns to different colors. <laughs> Wilbur, if you have Detect Magic on, you should be able to tell, see what kind of uh, school of magic those seeds are about. Like a oh. mood ring. Yeah. I actually, do not have detect magic for you. Uh, hmm. Well, I, then I set the rods down. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll deactivate the different ones. Okay. Uh, the different portals, and then set them down. And then I'm just gonna do my ritual for. Uh, okay. Ten minutes here. Okay. So while, during, go ahead. While he's doing the ritual. Daedra will offer her hand to Ren so that he can smell her hand to kind of establish some trust before she starts picking through his hair and removing any insect matter, which she will then feed or offer to the peacock. <laughs> Very well. So she's kind of approaching him as he's... I don't know, does Ren meditate, or does he pray, or does he just, like, stand there? I don't know what this looks like when he um, goes into this state. Yeah, he kind of, um, well, let me check it real quick. Okay. So, uh, Daedra approaches you and starts picking uh, little bits of plant and uh, mostly the insects or anything that might be on you. It yeah, you hear him, like, you see him meditate, and he kind of um, mutters um, a sound. Um, but, it, yeah, he looks like he's closing his eyes and meditating as he um, holds the seeds. So, Daedra, what did you say? It looks like what? It looks like when two primates are, like, aloe grooming mm -hmm. each other. That's how she's going to do it, a very animalistic fashion. <laughs> Yeah, you know, very gentle, caring, you know, parting of the, the hair, looking for <laughs> parasites, <laughs> you know. Remote. To do it in a way that's, like, expressing kindness right. towards Ren. So yeah, it's care. Right. Care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Amber, you're not in Kansas anymore, so you're not sure what's going on, but you have never seen anything like this. <laughs> uh, Chaz, you're a little bit like, huh? Okay. Uh, Wilbur, I don't know what you think of that. Mo, you're kind of curious. Like, oh, I wonder why she doesn't do that to others. <laughs> and uh, Cassandra, you're just kind of curious. I think like, wow, this is interesting behavior. Oh, that's cute. I don't know, Chaz, are you grossed out, or are you... I don't know. I'm concentrating on my uh, ritual. Okay. So you just kind of see this out of the periphery of your eye. You're not really paying a lot of attention to it, then. Uh, Amber, this is weird. This is not something you've seen before yet of Ren. I still think that um, I'm not afraid. Because, no, 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 no. Um, I think whatever it is that he's got it under control or i hope so okay after contemplating and focusing on this colorful display chaz you get this impression that the magic that is involved with ren is very ancient and the color comes across to you as that of very powerful and ancient magic. You get the same psychic impression as you did when you examined the runes earlier before you came into the tent. I don't know if you recall that, but it was in the beginning of the last session. Oh, I wasn't provided any psychic impression of a, of a rune. Well, you got one now. The runes were, rev were netherese. Yeah, you, that's what you get. You see those runes again. Uh, that's the psychic impression. But they're not from a specific school of magic that I'm seeing coming uh, off of them? It, this would be like, how would I describe? The mother school of all magic. I don't know what that means, but okay. It's kind of Mistra? like... It's kind of like... Yeah, that, yeah, so she just says that out loud. Mistra. Or Mistral, or... Like just the weave itself. Yes. Correct. The weave itself. Exactly. Most intriguing. It seems to be very base magic, not of a specific school. I'm talking mostly to Wilbur. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Wilbur? It's as if they've just manipulated the weave and not just a, an element of it. Hmm. I think that I don't want to be in this place if that's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are the walls of this room... Are there actual walls set up, or is these like the, or is it like the walls of the tent? It's kind of like the walls of a tent. Cool. Um, I'm going to do something dumb. I'm going to pull out my dagger. I'm going to find a place on the wall and see if I can cut through the tent. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. So as you walk up, you notice that. The tent wall feels like a tent. Uh, do you feel like cutting? I do. Okay. So as you stick your blade in there, you hear this very loud sucking sound coming from the hole that you just made. And it almost feels like when an airplane loses pressure. And all of the mirrors, save the one that you had traveled through, or that had been traveled through earlier, um, which would be the, what is that, the beige one or the ivory, uh, all of the mirrors shatter, and the room becomes like a vacuum, I guess, is the best way to put it. That violently? Yes. I would like you to all make a dexterity saving throw, please. Uh-oh. <laughs> In the so, dice tower. So all the inactive portals shattered? Yes. I didn't okay. mean to double click that, but I will take the eight. 
Oh, in the tower. Hold on. Mm -hmm. There you go. You can, Wilbur, uh, you can roll again. Uh, yeah, I threw it into the tower. Um, okay. It, it's no big deal, so it's all good. All right, so let me describe this. So Daedra, um, as soon as the... It, it's actually the lighting in here dimmed. The, the tent itself kind of like sucked in itself kind of thing. Um, but at the last moment, you saw the the portal kind of open and you move towards it and it kind of like pulled you into it. So you're based the the ivory one. It's the only one that's left. Uh so you made it through the portal. Uh so basically your your token is no longer on this map. Back in the one where it was before? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so she's she That's made it out. Go. That's the only way we're going to go. Okay. So. No, follow her. Bring the peacock. Bring the peacock. <laughs> All right. So. I that desperately. I don't know if anyone can hear, <laughs> but. Mo, you kind of uh, force yourself along the floor or whatever you thought was a floor, and you're able to crawl. And you get towards the mirror, and you notice that Daedra had slipped through. So, do you wish to follow her? Uh, which mirror is the one that she went through? The one that Amber is standing next to. That one. Uh, yeah, uh, can I grab the whole peacock cage and slip through? Might be a little awkward for you. Um, go ahead and, let's see, let's make a strength check. It's not heavy, but it's really awkward for your side. Kind of weak. Yeah, but you're able to uh, go ahead and grab it. You have to drag it, of course, but you're able to drag it towards the uh, portal, and it feels like this place is kind of collapsing in on itself. Uh, you got things spinning, things flying it's around the room. Ending. All right, so I will leave it just in front of the portal, figuring that Ren will probably be better suited to picking it up, and I will slip through the portal. So I leave it right in front of it. And okay. And kind of look to Ren as I run. Okay. Bounce through. Well, let's say, uh, Wilbur, most likely uh, you need to be last, so you still have the... Well, maybe not. You can just open the portal since you have the uh, mm -hmm. rod. Uh, the yeah, he uh, seems to be the most stable. Yeah. He's I'm he's in one place. And I will head through the portal. Okay. So you kind of squeeze past uh, Amber and jump into the portal or however you do it. I just... Kind of step high and step through. Okay. Um, Ren, um, you see Amber standing there kind of confused. She's like, she's trying to keep her balance. And you notice that his Skugmo had dropped this cage uh, near the entrance. With the bird in it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you did get the sense that the uh, Daedra had wanted the bird. You got that okay. body language. Yeah, and I care about animals in general. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. All right. Well, what I'll do is uh, I will use my strength and some leverage against that uh, very heavy sarcophagus, and I will um, give myself a boost to go through the portal while, you know, trying to take Amber in the cage with me. Oh, you're taking me too? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So go ahead and grab her. I'll, all right. Grab her. Mm -hmm. And I'll kind of push her ahead of me, and then I'll have the cage. <laughs> all right. Following. So, Amber, all of a sudden you're pushed back into the portal unvery ceremoniously, but you are able to make it through, and you end up to the other side where Wilbur had been earlier. Although you don't know that, but that's where you're going. That's where I hope I'm going. 
where everybody else went. Yep. And Ren is there also now. So you pop through this the doorway. Let's see. So we're down to the Chaz made it through Cassandra. Um, you see everyone else heading towards that portal. Uh, looks like everyone else has left. There's things flying around the room. The place is in disarray. You watch Ren grab the cage and knock uh, knock uh, um, Amber. Amber through. So this is what you have. You either go through the portal or you wait to see what happens. Mm, was I successful in my dexterity save? <laughs> well, yeah, you have the ability to make your way towards the, uh, the the portal. You have enough time to get there and jump through. Uh, but you do feel this place is kind of collapsing in on itself like a balloon. And do I have enough time to either scoop up anything that I can from the sarcophagus, then jump towards the portal? <laughs> um, I would say that if you do that and you don't make your next check, you might be stuck. But you can you can try. All right. In any case, I'll just go to Wilbur and help him help him along to get to the portal. Okay. So go ahead and move your token. And can I just grab Wilbur here and yep. tug him along towards the portal? Yep. So you grab him and say, come on, Wilbur, let's go. And, come on, uh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so both of you fall through the uh, portal. Instead of walking through, it almost feels like you fell from above. Because it's the room that you were in is collapsing in on itself. And it's kind of like spinning. And all this, you guys can hear a bunch of noise and like this, almost like a wind sound. And you can feel this place and even the magic in here unraveling. So it, it's really unnerving. Oh gosh, that was discomforting. <laughs> I do hope. Mr. Drillvis uh, won't be too mad at us. I think that's the least of your worries now. We... <laughs> yeah. So you guys are no longer stuck in that room. You're in a tiny uh, entry room. And you can see those jars to the south. Um, they are basically boxes and vases. Each kind of have uh, ancient writings and glyphs on it that look really strange and otherworldly. Uh, even the portal itself looks strange. It does not look like it did on the other side. On the other side, it looked more conventional. On this side, it looks very alien. And it actually closes and and goes dark after the last person comes through. Um, the glyphs look very powerful from just a, a cursory glance. Each of them contains the remains of an obsidian bones and strange distended skeletons. Uh, to the north is some laboratory stuff with dried substances that may have dried many years ago. There's kind of a musty smell in here and a doorway to the west uh, where Ren is standing and Wilbur. And Wilbur had uh, previously uh, tried to open this door, but he can explain that to you. Sorry, I had to finish typing that up. Uh, so I have done the magical tinkering thing uh, to make some light in the room, since you said everything went dark. And uh, so that door there, I tried to open it, but uh, the lock is not mechanical. It's magical, and I unfortunately don't have a means to open that right now. Mm. So we went from one being stuck in one room to being stuck in the other. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Not my brightest idea. Mm. But do you have that knowledge on how to get through the door? I do not. 
Open At least I don't think it. Well, I tried. <laughs> okay, so Daedra is going to take her cloak mm -hmm. and put it over the, the cage of the peacock. Mm -hmm. And she will offer up some of the live insects, any grubs or worms or fat-bodied, harmless, tasty bits to the peacock. Okay. The peacock kind of squawks in like a more of a settled matter, and it seems to be very happy to have its uh, feast of live food. So it seems content. That's the sense you get from it. I will look at Ren and smile, and I will just exude a, an aura of appreciation towards him. And as you guys are um, in the room trying to figure out what's going on, you're examining the, the the wares in here. You see the portal is shut down. There's a large blue globe in here that uh, would basically look like it might power this area. Or maybe it's some kind of magic item, but there's a, a glowing blue orb, and it, it appears to be pulsing with energy. And... Uh, I would like uh, Chaz to take a look at the runes. Uh, you got a cursory glance. They do remind you of the runes that you had seen in your mind's eye earlier. They're not the same, but they are of the same origin. Yeah. That makes sense that they'd still be netherese type. Do you want me to roll for any extra information, arcana-wise? or? Sure. Yes. There's your arm. there's one for each. Okay, you um, sense that this is very ancient magic, perhaps again uh, associated with the weave. Um, it also serves as a warning. Some of the symbols that you've noticed on there, and from what you can tell, um, this is not something you'd want to mess with. Um, there are some bones in there that you can kind of see. They are black ebony kind of looking bones and they're skeletons with strange uh, features. Something that you haven't seen ever in any of your studies but you do understand that it has something very powerful with it. And Cassandra you are very curious about the decor. You notice that the walls are painted in runes and that they are made of an iron substance of some sort. It almost sounds like you guys, when you bounce off things or you touch anything, like you're in a tin room. It's got like a hollow kind of metallic sound. To me, it looks like the floor is stone, so that is incorrect then, right? Mm -hmm. No, the, the, the stone is floor is right. The walls look like they're metallic. Can I do a history check on the stone on the floor? Sure. And see something about it? Yep. I... You sure can. Okay. So what you've noticed the stones is that they are kind of megalithic or very, very um, old. Whoever harvested these things and, and cobbled them together were obviously not dwarven, but the way that they are arranged, um, it makes it so that if they are disturbed, it won't ruin the floor. And based off of the particular type of granite, they would conduct uh, or at least contain uh, magic. Uh, the stone is filled with a substance that would allow for magic to, to be retained in it. And the stones themselves are probably a lot bigger than they look underneath. Uh, this is just like a top side of a stone carved to fit the floor. I relay all that information because I don't want to repeat it again. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Very. Horrifying. <laughs> You're trapped even more now. Well, since uh, Jazz was it? tried to attack the walls, 
can I use my plus one rapier to attack the door or gate here? Sure. See if we can that was out. Wilbur. Yeah, it was oh, Wilbur. <laughs> yeah, put the blame where it lies, I guess, right? <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. At least I'm out of that <laughs> Okay. So you go ahead and kind of shove your blade into the doorway, and you try to force open. Um, your blade meets much resistance. As a matter of fact, it kind of lets off a slight spark. And the... The... Uh, vibrance of the blade gives you uh, the impression of don't do it uh, just for a second. You've never had this blade do this and it actually cries out in anger and fear as you drive your blade into the wall. Oh, I'm sorry. I immediately hug the rapier and say, oh, no worries, no worries. I'm very sorry. I'm just trying to... <laughs> So, me, this is the first time it's ever really, truly reached out to you, and other times it had been in dreams. Maybe. So you're kind of confused where this feeling is coming from, but you get the impression that you didn't do right. I see. Hmm. So, uh, we can't get out of here by a brute force, I <laughs> guess? <laughs> and I need to make, you need to make an intelligence save, by the way, Cassandra. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Hopefully it saves. <laughs> so, at the mo time when you actually um were you're know, given that jolt of uh exclamation, a ancient but wizened voice uh booms into your mind and it says you and that's all it says me. you kind of lose focus after that and it's like it was starting to say something but then it it paused or it stopped you're not sure but you feel your attunement to this weapon uh increasing your connection to it i see is there any coloration in the room or is it all just this blue color from the orb and yeah it's and silver yeah it's not really much color in here other than what light you bring in yourself or from the bluish hue it is kind of dim it's not dark uh you're not even sure where the light source is coming from other than that um it's almost like have you guys ever been next to a black light Kind of has that feel to it a little bit. Hmm. That's the best way I can describe the light. Ren is uh, very shiny right now. <laughs> yes. Does the orb have the do not touch sigils or runes? No, it seems to be almost like an artifact, I guess. That's and it doesn't really have any flaws or etchings. Other than these tendrils of magic that kind of course around it, every now and then you'll see a, a swirl of energy um, pass over it or through it or something. You're not quite sure how it works, but it's really strange. I will uh, pull a glove off, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll lay a hand upon the orb. Okay. As he does that, Ren grabs his hand. Okay. So Ren forcefully, right? Forcefully? Right, forcefully. Forcefully grabs your hand as if to tell you no. What are you doing? And um, at this, Ren is going to... He still has his lingering magic because it lasts for like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go over toward the orb close but not to touch it. And... What color and how bright do I glow? Um, as you get closer, you begin to change into a more of a darker purple. You still have a purple hue, but it is more bright and a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd also like to... Um, I have a little suspicion 
um, but I can't communicate. I'd like to kind of go to the different, from there, to the different rooms in the, in the urns, in the door, to see if there's any kind of a match in the colors at all. So you mean the runes on the walls or in the urns or... Because all the walls are covered all over the place with runes and symbols. Yeah, yeah, kind of like take my hand but not touch them, but kind of move my hand along. Okay. We can kind of see if there's any, but I want to let him know that uh, maybe I can grunt to uh, Amber that um, maybe I think it's dangerous. Oh, as soon as I see that he's like he's reacted to the orb. And I mm -hmm. can see his, he's moving his hand around the room, trying to see. To me, it seems obvious. He's trying to find a corollary. Perhaps there's a switch rune that's associated with the orb or something, a command rune. I will happily watch him as he floats his hand across everything. So, Chaz, you're kind of surprised at how sophisticated he is for what he looks like. It's not as stupid as he looks. Ren no look stupid. <laughs> Uh, Amber, you cry out, or at least um, after you say that, um, you let Chaz know that he meant danger. Mm, I get that. I'm still kind of rubbing my uh, wrist where he grabbed me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, Cassandra's blade has uh, taken on a color of its own. It kind of has a bluish color to it, kind of a light blue. Um, it's giving off its own really dim light, and it seems to have her temporarily distracted as she tries to fathom or to reconcile what had just happened to her. And... So does Ren, when he moves his hand around the different rooms and the urns and the door, and maybe even if he sees the the blade, does he see any like correlation between, say, the door and something in the room or the? Um, you find a seam. You find a seam in the door, which is strange. Um. Near the pottery to the south, uh, you got a darker purple kind of feel to it. So obviously some sort of danger. As you move to the blue orb, you've kind of got the same danger sense. Along the walls is a pretty consistent uh, kind of a purplish color that doesn't seem as dangerous. Uh, but you have the impression of confinement. I guess your word would be captured. So I'll. Um, so you don't have the training or the right. the wherewithal to decipher the runes, right. but you do get the uh, impression of containment or capture. Okay, I'm going to uh, grunt to uh, uh, Amber since I f first found her in a trap. Oh so yes. I'm going to you know. So, Amber, it's the same sounds he made when you were upside down in that uh, snare. Blood running to my head. I recall. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, it's the same captured. word. Captured. Hmm. Well, like obviously, we are captured in here. Uh, you see, Daedra is, like, starts to breathe shallow and start to get a panicked look in her eye. Has anyone tried knocking? There has to be some way out of here. Oh, please. Well, the only other thing is to maybe something. try these wands. I'll take a wand and see if a wand will go into the uh, keyhole and give it a command word of uh, the same thing. Do we still hear... No, what is Rufus's... Rufus is the dog, right? Yeah. Yeah. What, do we still hear him uh, 
whining at Good all? question. Roll a perception check. Okay. Did I come through with the wand? Yes. One of you did. And you did no, bring, you did uh, say. That's not what I meant. Did you, you hear me what I said? Yes. I was gonna trigger yes. Wand and heal it. Yes. You brought yeah, them I with brought you. I brought all the wands with me other than yep. the ivory one, which Wilbur has. You did. Yep. Um, so, Amber, you do occasionally hear the whimpering of a dog in the distance. Uh, but every time um, you try to pinpoint the sound, it kind of gets covered up by everyone else's noise or their body movements. Um, it just, it's hard to dis discern, but uh, you look at Wilbur, and he looks very distraught. Uh, he looks a little bit concerned and antsy. Um, you don't know him well enough to really make an assessment of him, but you can tell he's not comfortable. But I I know that it's his dog, mm -hmm. so I would think that he would be concerned. And I look to him and I say, do you hear it too? Uh, did my... I, sh I can still hear it, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear it. So he confirms that with you, Shell. He nods and he looks like he's looking at the doorway, like trying to figure out how to get out or in or whatever. It's like I hear it, but I can't tell it direct, actually where it's coming from. Does it seem that way to you, or do you hear a specific direction? I'm guessing as before, it's still on the other side of the door. Yeah, and it, it, it ebbs and flows, so it feels like it gets stronger, and then it gets weaker, and then it gets stronger. And the more you guys uh, fiddle about with the room, the more frequent that, that changes, that dynamic. So the sound itself is indicative of it's either the magic or the physical space or perhaps both that is causing the change in volume and your connection to your creature um, change or your robot dog, Rufus. Okay. Um... Anything happen with the rods and the keyhole? Nope. Maybe well, knock. Just worth a shot. Knock on the door. Turn around and knock. So you knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. And then all of a sudden, inside of the birdcage, you hear this slap, slap, slap. You can't really see, but you can hear inside the birdcage. It like mimicked the sound of the whoever knocked on the door. You can't see the peacock, but you know he's in underneath the cloak. And the last time I you looked, peek. I'll peek under the cloak. He seems to be eating with what's left of what you've given him, but he uh, appears to be kind of intelligently looking towards the direction of the doorway. His head's kind of cocked. And you could see his little beady eye kind of looking out, and he's trying to look in the direction of where the door is. And it gives you the impression that he's kind of attuned to uh, whoever made that sound. Yeah. Bring him over here. I will, absolutely. I will even uh, open the door. Okay. So he kind of... Really close mm -hmm. and unlatch the cage. Okay. So the peacock can move freely, and let's see what he does. So he struts around the room, and he kind of like runs around you guys like like a dog that's been let out of his kennel. And uh, he goes up to the door, and he pecks on it three times. Wow. Good Mr. Peacock. Does the door open? No. <laughs> Name Mr. Try Peacock. knocking three times. All right. Work knock, for knock. Tony Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. So you knock you on it three saw. times. Peacock three times on the oh, yeah. <laughs> ceiling if you want me. Yeah. Twice yeah, on the pipe. No idea. <laughs> He's just like, what? You, 
I'm you old. Intellectuals. <laughs> All right. So uh, Chaz knocks on the door purposely, and the bird kind of follows him, except for he puts one more knock after. So it's like knock, 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 knock. Are you saying this is like Morse code? Okay. I didn't say anything. You can, well, you want to suggest that, Lady Shell? I'm going to suggest maybe there's some kind of um, um, code there where it has to be a certain number of knocks, maybe a space. And a knock. I'm not going to say Morse code because I don't think there's Ooh. such a thing. Right, but you're correlating the sound with well, the let's pattern. Guess. Give it a try and see what the bird does. <laughs> Be- it. Beethoven's fifth. <laughs> so, knock on the door after the bird does. One time. Animals have wisdom that we're just not aware hmm. of. So then it does this very complex set of knocks. So it's like knock, 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 knock. So it's like, wow, this thing... Uh, it's almost like playing Simon Says. All right. Well, I echo what the bird did. Okay. So as you are tapping all over the doorway, you notice that the um, slot in the door begins to um, open. Does it get wider? Yes. And a kind of a dim light starts pouring through. And the doorway begins to open, and the peacock kind of struts through like he's happy, and he's like hopping around as if he's not losing feathers or lost I feathers. I follow him in. Wow. Yep. We need to go, go, people, oh, go right through that door. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Go ahead and move your token uh, to the west a little bit, and I will unmask it for you as to what can be seen. Um. Can we get a token for the peacock? You know, I might just do that. Not today, but I will. Okay. Ren, come with us. Oh, yeah, I'm following the peacock, no doubt. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to lock the tokens at this point. So, um, Daedra, that's actually a gateway, uh, like a fence. That you were sitting in for a second there. I'm not saying you were there, but yeah, like a cage. A cell, yeah. A cell of some oh, sort. Not another cage. Oh. <laughs> oh, this place is awful. Yeah. Uh, looks to be a laboratory, so uh, obviously they need uh, things to test. Hopefully, we are not the test things. Well, I am right next to the peacock, so I don't want the peacock caged again, mm. now that he is free and happy. Right. I will stick close to Ren. Okay. Yet keeping Did my Did we leave the cage? And... Did you what? Did. Yes, the cage Did is still back. Did we leave the cage in yes. the yes. other room? Okay. Yes. Um, I have the cage on me, but it is not because of... Uh, wanting to contain him again it's for his own safety if he needs to sleep as an area of protection that he will voluntarily go into if he desires okay as you went through okay so as you went through the gateway there um it by the way it's still open hasn't closed and it looks like you can actually go back there maybe um but uh, straight across from the doorway was a cage um that Contained many female, um, I guess, prisoners of different ages. There's some scraps of food and a chamber pot in the corner. And many of them lay there stunned and silent as if they're like looking through space. There's probably about six or seven of them in there. And they're all... Huh? They all look... They look humanoids, like a couple elves, some humans. Are there any gnomes? Uh, believe it or not, no. Okay, Are the good. Wilbur looks really, very really. Sorry, Wilbur, go ahead. 
No, that was it. Uh, I just look relieved. There are no gnomes in the cage. I'm good. Okay, well, there are elves, I heard. Are they dressed anachronistically? Are they... The clothing they were wearing? The clothing looks like it's dissolving, as if they've been wearing it for years. Aha. Uh -huh. And it doesn't smell too pleasant in there. And whatever's going on in there, they look like they're alive, but they're not response, responsive to any stimuli, like they're not looking at you guys, they're not making eye contact. It looks like they're looking through you. Amber? Oh, sorry. Were you done? Have Amber. I was just going to say that um, <clears throat> I would like to look around the room to see if I could find a key. Okay. Um, so I want all of you to roll initiative just so we have an established order now. So we're going to go into initiative order so we're not talking over each other and So I'm going to start at the top. Um, Chaz. Cassandra went first now. Okay. Cassandra. I see. Poor dears. If only I'd been more prepared for this journey here. Um, you stated that... All right. So for now, let's see if we can get the, these poor souls out of here. May okay. I please investigate the room to see if there's any locks on the doors, or you say that this is just a fence or a full-on bars? Uh, full-on bars. Mm -hmm. And they're made of the same substance as the room that you guys were in earlier. All right. So for now, let me just see if I can get the uh, field of vision more here. I'll try to investigate the room further down south. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, move towards there. Okay. You pass by some more cages. Uh, one moment, please. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first cell that you pass, other than the one that you had just um, looked at, the the cell to the south, um, it's a chamber holding various males and species of different ages. Um, pretty much like the women, they look stunned and broken, and they don't appear to be talking or saying anything. As you progress further south, you notice another chamber, and this one seems to be obviously something or some people that have been worked on or perhaps experimented on. There's a whole bunch of mix and match in here. Uh, looks like arms were sewed on and heads were rearranged. There's like a a male arm with an elven head and a, it's just really odd they also look kind of broken uh, there's a small machine that's churning away in the corner of this room and it gives off a strange rhythmic ticking sound can you point out mm -hmm. where the machine is sure um it is Let's see, how can I do this? I will point. Let's 
hits it right there. I don't know if you can see the purple pointer, but it's in the third chamber to the south. Okay. Let's see. I will draw it for you. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Cassandra now has a visible face of horror and disgust and a bit of nausea. Okay. I need you to roll a constitution save, please. In the dice tower. Gosh, I don't have a really great cons constitution. <laughs> well, you manage to hold the contents of your stomach and you cover your mouth and you look towards your party members and they all can see your body language. So you guys see Cassandra kind of doubled over as if she's going to puke. So I guess that would end your turn, huh? <laughs> well, I have one. Can I do one action left? <laughs> okay. Can I bring out my loot and at least try to play a very somber but hopeful song? Sure. Go ahead and roll a performance check. All right, so Cassandra is basically going to her pastime and what makes her calm. And she pulls out her lute and starts strumming very thoughtfully and trying to cope with the horror that she's just witnessed. All of you know, well, at least Chaz, uh, you know that when she does this, she's super, like, stressed, I guess is the word. Gotcha. So you've seen her do this before um, when she's under duress. So it's almost like she does it to kind of hide from her emotions or to run from them. So is that it, Cassandra? Yep, Jazz's turn. Hey, Jazz. I'm going to come over here, and this looks like maybe a control panel or, or something here. Okay, so it kind of reminds you of what the portals had, and that stone is mounted up on top, this blue, this blue stone. So it's very similar to what you had seen in the other room. There is a strange console nearby. It seems like it's powered by that heavy blue stone. Um, it looks like it's emitting like a sudden um, burst of energy. Um, the console is made up of some very heavy metals, um, something that you've never really encountered yourself personally. Um, I need you to make an intelligence save, please. In the dice tower. Um, yes, so as you're looking at the controls, this burst of energy comes from the um, the uh, cage, or not the cage, but from the blue light on top. And it seems to be scanning the um, the rooms or the chambers. And as it does that, uh, the people inside, the, the, the captured people, um, they collapse to the floor as if stunned even more, where they can't even stand. And there's handles on this thing, and I want you to roll a intelligence check. Not Arcana or anything? No. Um, the metal that you noticed on this console is very strange, very otherworldly, and it is as hard or as durable as, let's say, mithril. So there's like this blue, almost like a laser scan that comes off this machine, and it kind of like reflects into the um, different chambers, the, the 
storage areas is what I call them, but they're cells. And it seems to be something that might keep these people under control, maybe. Or maybe it stuns them, or it does something to them, but the, uh, the idea of it is very horrifying and very strange. Okay, so I just stepped up. I'm just looking at it. It triggered. Um, mm -hmm. But do I get any sense of, like, maybe turning it off? Yes, um, but you're not sure which direction. It seems to be at a neutral point. All right, well, let's, um, let's try it left. Left. So when you turn it left, the gate uh, to the north, it actually starts to grind and pull upward. So it slowly begins to rise, the fence or the, the bars. They appear to be very meticulously made. They actually retract into some tubes that actually go up through the ceiling. Well, good. There's like a machined uh, causeway for the tubes, for the fence or the well, gate. Shall we see if we can get them? How many people are we talking about in, in each of these? So things? the one to the north has like seven people. The one to the south of that, where the men were, has like five. The one directly south of that had like three strange-looking, hybrid-looking things. And you're not quite close enough yet to know what's in number, or, or down at the bottom. Okay. Well, I'll ask uh, if we can bring the females out of that uh, storage area. Um, some of them would have to be dragged. Some of them you could kind of push, kind of coax along, but you can get them out. Okay. Well, see if we can get them out and lean them up against walls in the northeast. So, um, as whoever's helping them get out, who would that be? Anybody helping them? Uh, I'll help. Ren will help. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. You notice Daedra. Daedra doesn't like to see anyone cage, especially elves and women, so yeah, I'll help. Okay. So um you notice that the clothing that they had on at one time, the stuff is that's deteriorating. Doesn't look like it was ori originally in this condition. As a matter of fact, you see small scraps of silk. You notice some old jewelry. Um, whatever these women were, they weren't always captives. So they weren't just brought here, you know, as slaves. They were probably recently and, or maybe, who knows, maybe a long time ago captured. But the condition of their clothing and the smell in the chamber, it's at least been a few months. Well, I will uh, cast press the digitation on uh, each one of them to clean them up and and try to remove some of the some of the odor and. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to make them more presentable and. Well, just yeah, trying to get give them some dignity back, even if they're not aware of it yet. Okay, so go ahead and move your token closer to the um, group there. Let's see. What's my range of pressing? It's a, it's ten feet. So okay, close enough. I can be there. Okay. So you notice that Chaz is doing his best to clean up the, uh, the women from the chamber to the north. Okay. I'll say once we get them all out, then we'll see if we can move on to the next chamber, and I'll be done. Okay, Amber. I probably did more than I needed to. You uh, see this big mess. Um, you yeah. feel awful. Um, this is against everything that you believe in. Um, this is right. inhumane. I'm, yeah, disgusted by the treatment of these people. Um, I'm going to go to each one of them and see if um, any of them need any kind of uh, medical help that I could do for them. 
Yeah. Well, do, do, is is that possible, or are they as good? Go ahead and make a medicine check, please. Okay. Some of them suffer from some minor wounds. Probably inconsequently, they have scrapes and bruises. Uh, maybe because they're not aware of what they're doing. Uh, it seems that Chaz's uh, magic is doing a good job cleaning away some of the filth. Uh, but you also notice that the clothing that they were wearing, a variety, um, not uniforms, may have been nice clothing at one time. Do I um, see any dwarves in the group? Nope. Not in this group. Just humans and elves. Okay. Um, anyone that needs um, any kind of healing, how do you want me to do this? Like, roll it? Um, you rolled a medicine check. You rolled a medicine check, okay. and there's only one out of this group that may actually need a healing roll. Okay. I will uh, use Cure Wounds and, and cast it on the one that needs healing. Just okay. Just roll it in, the, in yeah. the chat window. Yeah. Okay. So not much healing, damn it. Well, it's enough to heal the the wounds. It almost looks like bed sores, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um and you know, they I don't want to get too graphic, but they weren't very pleasant. Um but they seem to be closing, they're not weeping. They're, they're they look better. Uh even the smell is starting to get better in here as you guys are working That's with them. Good. Uh, is anyone conscious enough where they could, uh, I could give them some water to kind of revive them a little bit? They don't seem to take any physical cues. Um, as a matter of fact, their food and water bowls in there seem putrid, as if they haven't been fed or taken care of in a while, and or nothing has been emptied. And uh, as you are helping this, you guys hear some metallic sounding sounds coming from the south. Uh, perhaps skipping or dancing along the rock base of this chamber. Maybe the prison keeper. So you're helping them Amber, feel better, and yes. you're 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 basically cleaning them up. Um, I need you to make a perception check, please. Okay. Okay. Immediately, you notice something on the arm of one of the women. It is a tattoo. Does this tattoo look familiar to me? It looks old and ancient. It doesn't look like anything you've seen, although it does resemble some of the types of symbols that you guys have been stumbling across since you arrived at the circus. Um, I'm going to... Um... Ask Chaz to maybe look at the symbols since he seems to know these type of symbols and see if anything looks familiar to him. Okay, I'll do that when uh, I can get back around to my turn. Or okay. Can I do that? Yeah, go ahead, Ben. Okay. Uh, roll a, I guess, investigation. You know it's a rune already, so it's not like. You need to know that part. Okay, so you look at the, turn her arm over, and on the back of her arm, or what is that, the, uh, not the forearm, but under, uh, you see this uh, tattoo, and it reminds you of some of the ancient writings that you guys had come across before. Um, also, you notice that the way this person looks is not like uh, anyone you've seen recently in the last hundred years or so you've been alive. Um, you're not even so sure this person um, existed 
here, meaning in your plane of existence. So you're not even sure what the hell's going on here, but uh, time has certainly taken a turn for the worse for these people. But it appears like these people are not from this time. It seems like maybe they were there for a short time to you, but maybe it was a long time to them. Um, but you look at their fingernails and their hair, and they're all in different states of growth. Some of them look like they've been here a long time. Some of them look like they were just recently brought here. But you're able to ascertain that they may have been guests to the circus at different times in history. Right. So these holding cells are probably some kind of stasis chamber. Correct. Or, yes, that's what you think anyways. Hopefully they won't uh, begrudge us for removing them from their stasis. Hopefully they will be helpful if we can help them regain consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, Chaz, do you relay any of that to anybody, or you just kind of keep it oh, to yourself? Yeah, I'm saying this out loud. Okay. Sure. All right. I wanted to know if um, that was the only, there's only one person that has this tattoo. They don't all have the tattoo. Correct. Correct. Okay. I'm done with my turn then. Okay. Ren, so you're helping some of these women file out of this this did, holding did cell. I, did I hear the uh, the scraping or clacking sound of the cell? Yes. All right. I that alerts me because I've seen these cages and we let the people, we're letting the people out, but um, I hear that noise, so I think it's either ha has to be other prisoners or the person or things that may have something to do with imprisoning, imprisoning them. So I'm going to uh, have my maul ready, but I want to try to do a perception check a little bit more. Okay. Go ahead and roll perception. Okay. Um, yes, you do confirm that it is a metallic sound. And as soon as you direct your attention, you notice a kind of a, a familiar sight. Um, you see a mechanical dog. You notice him. Yeah, I have seen him a little bit, and so um, I try to go. This is Wilbur's dog, right? No. Yes. Wilbur's dog? Yes. I say, Wilbur! And I motion, I motion him over my way. I will look and take notice. Oh, okay. So bookmark that if you haven't already. So at that moment, you see this reunion between Rufus and Wilbur. Uh, Rufus comes skittering around the corner and runs towards his former creator. And he acts just like a dog would. And I will uh, scratch him behind the ears and... He's going to roll over and belly rubs and all of the wonderful dog things. And even though he is mechanical, he still has floppy ears, by the way. <laughs> nice. So you feel like a you know hundred pound weight lifted off your shoulder. Uh, but Ren, you uh, notice the dog going by. And you see Cassandra's horrible, horrid face, uh, or her kind of concerned look. Um, you hear more uh, stirrings to the south, west, and you're not sure what it is, but it's not metallic anymore. The metallic was coming from the dog's feet across those big stones. Okay. 
continue down inside my mall, and I'm going to check out these two rooms. Okay, the uh, room right next to you has these, I don't know how to describe it, strange-looking humanoids that look like they've been um, experimented on. There's different arms and legs attached to them that don't match. Uh, they look like they're out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a strange mechanical device clicking away inside of this area. Strange mechanical device? Yep. Um, what does it look like? Um, nothing you've seen in your travels. Uh, it looks like a metal box. There are some ticking sounds. They seem rhythmic, like they have a pattern to them. You're not sure. Okay. And um, can I go down there and look in, in the, uh, see what's in there? Okay. So as you round the corner there and you head further south, uh, you look into a kind of a more of a darkened area, although it's still a, a holding cell. There is a large, twisted looking monstrosity. It looks as if like multiple creatures have been smashed together, though you can still see its eyes are strangely intelligent, human like. There's a bunch of scraps of uneaten food and filth. It looks like it's a kind of in pain, this thing. Uh, it's kind of slinking back behind by the wall. It does not appear to be, um, you know, uh, friendly, but it doesn't appear to be menacing. And mm -hmm. it's kind of hanging back like it's afraid. Um, I'm going to kind of um, groan in a manner toward him that would indicate sympathy and not being a threat and maybe beckon it to come closer uh it growls um fiercely as if in warning okay um i tell you what i'll uh it has uneaten food right um yep maybe i'll uh take one of my rations set it down there inside the cages and offering and just kind of back away. And I'll it slowly it. slithers towards you and it uh, grabs the food and ravenously just like plants its face in there and just kind of does a face dive right into the food as if it's never eaten before. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys seen the, what is it, a chimera? in yeah. the Fallout 4. Yeah. That's kind of what it looks like. Mm. Okay. And I'll uh, kind of uh, I'll try to communicate with um, Amber for her to come over and see these and I'll end my turn. Okay. So Rufus, um, he's running back to his owner. Appears to be very happy. Okay, Mo. I think you're okay. kind of confused. This is really strange. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I see that in the cage that I'm next to, these guys are helping women come out. Yep. They look like they're in old clothing. Mm -hmm. Kind of bad shape. Uh, over next to me in the empty square that's, uh, that's partially got amber in it, there's something in this corner. Yes. So, you notice this, yes, that. 
So it's like a, a pedestal. And on there is another one of those blue stones. Uh, it looks not as big as the one on top of the machine, but it still is there, and it's very uh, prominent. It glows. There's some a light, a light uh, blue glow from it, and it appears to be pulsing a little bit, just really slightly. Um, it's not as big as the other ones, but nonetheless, it's kind of sitting there in like a pedestal type thing. Oh, I don't like that. I gotta get far away from as I can. Okay. I'll go through my friends. That means I think twenty five feet is gonna put me there. Yep. And then I see this odd machine that uh that Chaz was uh, messing with. I don't like that. I use my last bit of movement to get close to Cassandra. Yeah, kind of creepy. Um, is everybody okay with the content so far? Yeah. Anybody yeah. pissed off or... Okay. Well, I want out, but other than that... No, I mean in real life. Oh, no. Okay. All right, Mo. so uh, you kind of saddle up next to Cassandra. You hear her playing her instrument kind of, kind of charmingly. It seems to calm you down a little bit. You don't feel as antsy as you did next to that blue globe. It's playing very beautifully at the moment. All right, well, I will just uh, listen to... Amber play. You mean uh, Cassandra? Just, I mean Cassandra. I'm sorry. Yep. And I'll just kind of take dodge action in case something okay. comes at us. Like, You're oh, getting ready to jump. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Wilbur, you were scratching your dog's ears. You have been reunited. Uh speaking to Rufus for a minute. Okay, good. Um, well, now that I've got you, we've got uh, one more to find. And hopefully we can get things back to how they were. But he's going to also walk around and start examining the... Ren, let us know about the ticking mm -hmm. machine, right? Yeah. I'd like to go take a look at that. He really didn't have to let you know you can hear it. So. Okay. And I will tell Rufus to uh, look after the women and the children there, just to, or the women there, just to kind of protect them for a moment. Yeah, he's standing sentinel near that door. So examining this item, uh, can I get a sense of its function? Mm, go ahead and roll uh, some of your tinker lore. Sure. Uh, what what check would you like for that? Um, let's go with perception first. All right, and just straight up like wisdom perception, or do you want it like intelligence perception? Um. Let's go with your intelligence. Okay. So what you can ascertain is it's definitely manufactured. It is made of many intricate parts. You're not quite sure what its exact um, function is, but it is very sophisticated um, from your just from your observations. Being that it makes the ticking sound, you are definitely sure that is mechanical. Um, whether it's magic or not is yet to be seen, but it appears to be running on its own accord. The patterns don't change, and the beings inside seem to be subdued 
and standing against the back wall. They don't appear to be coming, walking around or anything. And that, and that's the beings that are inside that entire the cell. Cage area, yeah, right? yeah, they look pretty hideous. It kind of shocks you a little bit, like what the. Well, that's unsettling. Um. And there's no off switch for it? No. Not that okay. you can see. Fair enough. You're not close enough to really tell. All right. And is there another door leading out of here? Straight across from you, there is a crest of some sort. And it appears to be... Uh, a, yes. It appears to be a doorway of some sort. It's not open. But it is of solid, shiny, kind of smooth, metallic metal, like the other room that you guys were trapped in earlier. And above it is like this base of some kind of, you don't know what it is, maybe a creature, a dragon, a demon, a devil. You have no idea what it is. But whatever it is, it's not human. Or humanoid. Uh, I will continue just kind of examining the door, thinking about what this clock thing that is ticking means, and that will be my turn. Okay. Okay, Daedra is going to move farther down the corridor. She's looking for another door, not not the one that Wilbur just found another one down here. Okay, hold on a sec. Are you guys getting those errors now? I'm not. Okay. So I'm getting some memory memory errors. Let me see if I have too much stuff. Did your portals break? I think so. But I'm getting a direct 3D pool error, where it's failing to create texture. So usually that's a memory issue with too much stuff. Not always, but usually. So if that ever happens to you, go to Maps and Images. Now I can probably close the door with the, with the uh, not the door. Oh. Isn't the, or are we on the same map? Is this all one map? Maybe. Mm -hmm. well, I thought it was a separate map where the tent was. Jared Blondo, your map is too big. Probably. Well, I looked at it. It wasn't that bad. We having technical difficulties. Yeah. I haven't had one of these in a long time. It What's happened. Da What's Deidre it thinking? <laughs> Deidre is thinking that the creatures down here are more like aberrations. So they're disturbing, but not as disturbing as the ones in the top cells that have just been trapped and are not aberrations. Like the ab as if the aberrations are too far gone for help. 
And she just really wants to find a way to get everyone out. Including, including the aberrations? Not including the aberrations, but including the anciently dressed elves so the, and humans. So the first three selves, or just the first two? First two. Oh. Do you need us to log off the table? Oh, okay. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, I thought we'd probably have to do that. Yeah, I'm able to log off the table, so it's no problem. Yeah, I'm off. Me Nothing too. changed, so I didn't save anything. Zane is. He just logged off. But he doesn't know what's going on, so <laughs> it's still on me. Yeah, sorry, I stepped in the kitchen for a moment. Are we logging back on, or is that... What's, what's the plan? But it wasn't streaming, but the recording.